what's up everybody so welcome back to the channel so today we're going to be talking about snowflake and its ipo that is set to happen any day now hey good people so if you're new to this channel feel free to stick around like and subscribe we're going to talk about money we're going to talk about investing but talk about how you can succeed from wherever you are so in today's video we're talking about the ipo snowflake which has a lot of hype around it a lot of people are talking about it because of two of their investors warren buffett and Salesforce. Now, just a quick disclaimer. Now, anytime you see a lot of hype around anything, we don't buy hype, all right? So just get this in your mind. Don't buy the hype. Don't buy the hype. Only buy the facts. So what that means is, yes, people can be excited about it. People can say, oh, Warren Buffett is investing in it. Salesforce is investing in it. But if you don't understand or know what it is, don't buy it learn about it first now yes it's exciting to see that warren buffett is investing in this company but warren buffett has made some relatively bad investments as well however this might not be the case with that i'm not saying it's about snowflake but just in general to just don't be so quick to buy the hype but learn about what you're buying so what is snowflake in short snowflake is a data company they're all about data data clouds providing data allowing companies to have access to the data they need so they can succeed make the changes and scale that they need to do. So now why would a company like Salesforce, for example, invest in it? Because Salesforce is in that that field, the IT world, the systems world, it's a systems company. And in the day and age that we're living in now and with the internet and how technology and things are constantly evolving like fast, this actually makes this company very valuable. Let's talk about where they fit in the market. So see, the role that they play is pretty significant. Now, if you're not familiar with what data is, Data is pretty much driving just about anything. If you're on YouTube, it's an algorithm that helps bring videos to you, things like that based off of data. And the data comes from based off of what your interest is and things like that. Data has so many different layers to it. So when you're online now and like everybody's been, you know, kind of frustrated and kind of at odds with the whole thing of like Facebook and Instagram and Amazon and Google kind of popping up ads when they were just talking about something you know around their phone or around their computer well for you you think it's a breach in privacy for the companies they look at it as data now data has been something that has been being collected way before the internet just imagine if you go and buy a house and all of a sudden you have all these companies sending you information it's because your information your data has been sold off to another company now data is something that has been around for a while and it has caused a lot of companies to really make the decisions that they make even far as where to put a store at how big to put a store if a chick-fil-a is going to be in this neighborhood or not where are the Aldi's going to be built at where is the walmart's going to be built at so companies that do really really in-depth research that's what they thrive off of they thrive off having having data so for example where i live at i live right in between two walmarts they're within like four miles of each other and i live right in between now one of them is smaller than the other one of them is huge it has three doors, the other one has one door. Well, the reason for the size is based off of the area. So if you go into one store, you're gonna see most of the same product, but not necessarily all of it because of the area and what people like to buy or what they like to do. They try to build these based off of the data out of the area and people's spending habits and shopping habits. You go in one door, it's the garden area where it has like flowers, mulch, all these different things for gardening because people typically love to do that stuff in that area more than the other area and if it was something that wasn't working they wouldn't keep bringing it back every single year so the data that they're getting from that is showing that people are buying this and buying that and they should keep it then you go into another door and like half of the year if you go through that door they're always going to have flat screen tvs lined up along that walkway well why would they have the flat screen tvs there is it just because, hey, we're just gonna put them there? No, it's because of data. When stores start to shift up the way that their things are out on the floor and what you see when you come in or what you see when you go here, it's based off of data. For example, you ever see something where it's like, people who typically buy this also buy that, right? If you're shopping on Amazon, you see that? It's based off of data. And so now, because we're so internet-based and so technology-based, Having data is huge. And so companies want that so they can grow their business, so they can scale, so they can find out what their customers want, what they don't want, where to put their marketing efforts. And as well with Snowflake, they actually, actually have a, a part in their data where you know, companies can look into the data cloud and see 
what's happening with even some of the other companies if their data is being shared, their data is being allowed to be shared. So it gives companies an in-depth look into the market of what they're trying to do and what they're trying to build, as well as just being able to monitor and uh, house another company's data as well, that particular company where they can also access their, access their own data and see everything that's going on. And it looks like they also have some innovations. I've seen some different trademarks for things like Snow Park and all these different trade names and trademarks that they have. So it looks like they may be you know, looking to innovate even more beyond you know, just the, their data structure now to build more things out for just things around data. And the leadership seems to be fairly strong as well as their financials. Well, you know, it depends on how you look at the financials. For some people, they'll look at their financials and say, well, it looks like they're losing more money than they are making it. And it's kind of one of those cases like when we talked about Uber to where it's not necessarily that they're losing money, they're choosing to spend the money. So they're choosing to put a lot of money into advertising and marketing, you know, in hopes that they're going to reap the, that money back. But then if you look at their revenue, you'll see that they are making the money back for sure. So now for me, if you're spending money in marketing, it doesn't really bother me like that to, you know, as a company because I'm someone that you know, I own a business and I understand putting money into marketing. And for example, I actually have a marketing firm, so I understand what it means to put money into marketing. I understand what it means to have data and be able to market to the right people as well, as well as the IT world because I have a technical background. So I definitely understand those things as well. So as far as the IPO, should you invest? Am I investing? Well, let's look at it like this. So they currently have a lot of hype and the IPO is set to start at like around $100. So that's that's kind of high for an IPO. I think it might be a little bit overpriced at the moment, but typically it looks like it's going to be one of these companies that's going to end up being just a growth company. They may not ever have a, a dividend, but you know, a growth company where they, the company stock just grows. But in the beginning with IPO, sometimes what you see is this huge run up where it gets more and more and more expensive because it has a lot of hype around it. And then, you know, people decide to take their profits and then it dies down or the stock decides to sell around a certain price, you know, after a while. Because you could buy it and then it could run up and then it could settle down just a little bit and just keep running up. You never know, especially in this market where you can see companies that doesn't even make any sense why they're running up so high during this time. There's so many different things that just don't line up right now in the market. However, are you losing out on an opportunity by not investing in the beginning? But like I said, typically when there's a lot of hype around IPOs, what happens is people tend to buy it and there's this huge run up and then people, they're gonna take their profits. So how do people take their profits? So let's say for example, if you were to put $100 into an IPO and now that company doubles and that $100 is now $200. So people who kind of really understand what it means to take profits, what they'll do is now out of that $200, they will take out $100 and that, that other $100 sit and it can grow or do whatever. So that's kind of an example of how people take profits. So typically you see that a lot with IPO, so it runs up, then it comes down some. But the most important thing for you to understand right now, if you're looking to invest is yes, yes, it's great. Warren Buffett is investing in it, but make sure you understand and learn what you are investing in. Never invest blindly. And that's what a lot of people are set to do just because they see other people talking about it and how they're going to get in it and Warren Buffett and all these different things. And they're just like, well, you know what? I'm just going to put money into it because they're putting money into it. Now, if that's your angle, then that's fine. But I still encourage you to learn about what you're putting your money into. So personally, me, will I be investing in it? Yes, I will probably be investing in it. I still don't know if I'm going to buy at the beginning of the IPO, or if maybe I'm going to wait, you know, for a pullback. But typically, a lot of times around things like this, what I'll do is, you know, I'll invest some money now, and then I'll, you know, I'll look at it later and see, you know, how it's doing, and then I'll make the choice if I want to put some more money into it or not. But this is coming purely from the fact that I actually believe in this technology because one, like I'm involved in it, I'm around it, I understand it, and it's something that's just inevitable for right now. So actually being to put your money into you know what's really happening right now with technology and things like that and on the IT side and on the system side you know I like that that's that's something that I don't mind being invested in something that I actually like and something that I actually want to be a part of and I understand what's going on hey but you tell me what you think about the company are you investing are you staying away from it what do you think about the IPO I'd love to hear about that in the comments all right guys don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video y'all take care peace